Welcome back to Teens in Action. It seems like we all have the same general causes of stress, whether it's grades, family, or friends. You're right, Alex. As a teenager, we all experience these emotions. It's just a matter of finding the right resources to help us deal with them. Next, we talk to a high school student who tells us about a very difficult time in her life and how she got through it. Susanna Tolkien is a 17-year-old student at one of the most academically challenging schools in the LA area. She also volunteers at the Teen Line at Cedar sinai Medical Center. Susanna has also been dealing with depression since she was in the fourth grade. She knew she felt different, but wasn't sure why. Thank you, Susanna, for coming on our show today. You're welcome. You felt different at a very young age. Tell us what kinds of feelings you're having and what sort of symptoms. Um, I noticed when I was around, you know, in fourth grade, I noticed that I was more sensitive than the rest of my classmates and I cried more easily. I cried more in general. Um, at sleepovers, I'd always have trouble sleeping and, you know, I never thought anything was wrong since I never thought I was different. And then I started realizing more and more little things, more subtle things that other kids didn't have issues with. You know, I was just a sadder kid, I guess. Any specific symptoms? I guess just developing insomnia, which I've still had to deal with, and I really did cry a lot. And it was kind of hard for me to make friends. Like, sometimes I'd be really outgoing, but usually, I really was afraid of making friends. Mm -hmm. Kids want to fit in at your school, like any other kids, you know, our age. How did you, like, how did you try to hide your depression? Um, yeah, I faked smiles a lot for a really long time. I would just go around pretending that I was a lot happier than I really was. And actually, that ends up being a lot harder for most people, because the more you pretend, the worse it gets inside. Mm -hmm. So. Um, during your depression, during your symptoms of feeling depression, how did your family and friends react to it? Uh, at first it was hard for my parents to take me seriously. Like, you know, when you have a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, stuff like that, and your kid is moody, especially daughters, a lot of the time parents think she's crying, whatever, boy issues or something like that. And it was, it was hard for them to take me seriously. It was hard for them to realize that maybe this was different than just the normal, everyday mood thing. Once I really started opening up to them, they were a lot more receptive to what I had to say. It was harder with my friends. I actually did lose friendships when it got really bad, when the depression got really bad. It was hard for me to maintain normal relationships with some of my closest friends, and, you know, I really regret that. But. You know, it's hard for it's hard for people to hear. You know, if you're really depressed. In your opinion, what was your lowest point during the depression? Um, early tenth grade, I um, I attempted suicide, and I had been self injuring since seventh grade, and it just got really bad, and I felt like I didn't have anything to live for. I felt like my friends had left me. My parents still weren't, you know, they weren't always at home there for me. And my grades weren't great. I hadn't been sleeping. I hadn't been paying attention in school. And I thought, what's the point? So, you know, I, I tried to slip my wrists and um, sort of while it was happening, I I stopped and I sort of distanced myself from the situation and, and I said, you know, what are you doing? At that time, I was 15 and I thought, I have my whole life ahead of me. Why end it now? It has to get better. And from there, everything got really, really serious. And yeah, it sort of had to get worse before it got better. I was hospitalized for a while. Um, but it's true that once you hit bottom, you can only go up, and I did. I entered really intensive therapy, which is what I needed. I found a great therapist. I started mending my friendships. I started being much more open with my feelings, and 
So yeah, it was my lowest point, but it was also the best thing that could have happened to me since it did lead to me getting so much better. Um, you mentioned earlier you stepped back and you know you looked at your life and you know you realized what was going on. What exactly made you think about what we were doing, like, and how? What made you? What made you think about your future? Um, I thought about what I wanted to do when I got older. I thought about what I could do. Um, I thought about people that I knew who had suffered with depression because I talked about this with older people that I knew, and it happens, and people go through it, and life is hard, but I just realized that I didn't want to die, and I wanted to see what was, what was gonna happen with the rest of my life. There's therapy and there's medication, but what helped you the most deal with your sadness and with your grieving? Both, really, a combination. Um, I had to try two kinds of medication, and one of them, made me nauseous and made it even harder for me to sleep, so I thought at first, oh, there's nothing that can help me. Until I found something that really worked for me. And I cried less, I slept better, I felt a little stronger, I felt like I was better prepared to face the world and therapy. I had to do it, I think I was doing it four times a week for an hour, an hour and a half. It was. It was a lot of therapy, um, and yeah, it took up a lot of my time, but I found a great therapist. I guess what worked the most was the therapy, and I needed the medication to get me through the hardest times. We understand you have to deal with your depression every day. Um, how do you deal with it now, currently, without your medication and therapy, and how do you help others? Well. I still go to therapy sometimes when I'm having a really tough time, and yeah, I deal with it every day. Um, everyone feels sad. I do, you know, I still cry. I still get emotional. I'm still sensitive. I haven't changed, you know, it hasn't changed who I am, but I'm, I'm just better prepared. I'm, it's, you know, I can say, well, are you, what, what made me feel this way, what made me start to feel so sad or maybe made me start to cry? How can I avoid those situations? Um, and also just accepting that regular sadness is a part of life. Um, and I work for Teen Line now and it's this teen to teen hotline and it's just you know, I answer the calls. So people call the line and I'll pick up the phone and I never know what kind of call it's gonna be. And it's one of the best things that I could have done because I'm helping people. And so my life is worth so much more, not just because I'm living for me, although I am, but also if I can help other people, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Okay, is there anything you'd like to add? I just think that people a lot of the time are afraid to get help and think there's really something wrong with them or that their friends will hate them or just, you know, afraid to talk about depression, feeling suicidal. And people just need to know that it's so important to get help and there really are people who can help and there's always someone to talk to. So. Thank you, Susanna, for coming You're and welcome. for discussing, you know, your life story and how you felt in the past and how you can help others. And we really enjoyed having you here. Thank, Thank you, you very much.